So as far as miking goes, I'm using Neumann 184s in a Glyn Jones placement. I've never done this before, but it worked great. And they are going to API 512s. For the rack tom and the floor, I'm using a vintage Neotech preamp because of its EQ. It's actually the only channels that I EQ. The rack tom has a 421 on it and the floor tom has a 112. The snare drum also has a Neumann 184. I'm in love with this microphone. The kick drum has an SM7 going to a vintage Altec preamp and a Melodium, which is a very old vintage microphone, which has subs that I have never heard in anything else in the world. For the center of the kit, I'm using a 414 EB, which is an amazing 80s microphone. For rooms, I'm using two Coles microphones pointed at the drummer. Additionally, I'm sending the Coles to a parallel compressor, which is a clone of the SSL bus compressor. And I have two jars, one a glass jar and the other a tin jar with 57 betas in them that just have a funky tone that I will either use or not use if I want to. So let's see what happens. We are now in a different studio I sometimes mix in and I want to listen to the tracks as if they were tracks that were sent to me. We will start by playing the overhead and slowly introducing the channels and manipulating them slightly just to see their limit and what we can and cannot do with them. Right off the bat, I see that the overheads have a great panoramic picture. They receive both the hi-hat and the toms amazing. And now let's introduce the kicks and see if the phase needs to be flipped and how we feel about them. So the first kick has more punch, it needed to be flipped. If we go to the waveform, yes. All right, let's move on to the snare. We record the snare very, very hot. Um, I would not recommend doing this, but the situation just called for it because I was using a preamp that I could not really change the gain of. So let's see how that interacts with these channels. So it does add to the presence of the snare, but there are some low mids that will be needed to take care of. I don't think it's something too dramatic. Let's see how we are doing with phase. Really is a matter of taste. Let's leave it at that. Maybe slightly reduce the low mids, the resonant frequency. As more to the thump of it, and we see massive amounts of sub frequencies that we just don't need, so let's cut that out. Whenever you do Low cuts, you should check phase because it's a very, very dramatic EQ move. Let's give a listen to the center kit microphone. So this also kind of captures the whole kit. If I would do anything, as you see here, I would compress and distort it and let's see how that reacts to it. You see it adds the room to the source. If I would do something 
this dramatic, I would pre-EQ and maybe even post-EQ. This is just a channel that if in the mixing stage I would like, I would use, but it's not a necessity, but while we're at it, let's do it. In certain scenarios, I would leave it like this. I don't know, this is really cool, but for now, Let's go for trying to make like really authentic kind of drums and not anything wild. I'll play the kit without the center kit distorted channel and then I'll slowly introduce it. Let's listen to the rooms talking about space and character. Let's see the parallel channel, which is a parallel of the rooms. Let's see how that interacts with the overhead. So this really is a matter of mixing aesthetics because if I would really want focused drums, I would maybe leave the room and the parallel outside of the picture and just go with the overheads. And if I would want, I don't know, an R&B or kind of vintagey kind of feel, then I would use them. Let's listen to the jars. This is the tin jar. Let's listen to the glass jar. These also, I just would distort the bejesus out of and let's see how they react. Again, this is more of a wild kind of thing. If I would go for drums with a lot of character, then this could have been cool. Let's see how they interact with the other channels. Really cool, adds this dimensionality and if I would push the resonance upwards extremely into the distortion, it would really create cool tones. Let's see this. In the same breath, I could reduce this resonance and make it more mild. Also really cool, let's play around with the tin jar. Again, it's a character thing, both the tin jars and the center kit I just saved for distorting. Let's hear the tom tracks. Let's see phase. Cool, I like the phase this way. It does have mids that aren't too pretty. Let's check what happens when we reduce them. Let's try adding more power to the fundamental frequency of it. This works a bit better for me. Um, let's now see the floor tom and how that interacts with the overhead, although it's very strong because of the way we recorded. Nice, sounds great. So we have pretty good sources that we can manipulate in various ways. It's very flexible, which 
is one of the goals, especially if you're recording and you're not the producer per se, but more the recording engineer. This is a good starting point for a rough mix and this sounds great. Mm -hmm. 